Hey guys, it's Raynad once again doing a Hearthstone player's favorite thing, telling Blizzard just how much they suck. Uh, no, I'm actually uh, going to be doing a lot more videos on, I guess, game design philosophy, and uh, I have all the respect in the world for Team 5. I think that they did an excellent job with Hearthstone, and um, even though I'm going to be making a bunch of videos on, um, I guess, like low-hanging fruit that I think can be improved on in the game, uh, I don't want you guys to take that as me claiming Hearthstone's a bad game or anything like that. Far from it. Uh, actually, I actually think it's an excellent game, and we have um, a lot of things that we can fix up real easy that will uh, yeah, make it a lot better. So uh, this video, I'm going to talk about counterplay. Uh, and it's something that I think is a uh, basic tenet of a successful multiplayer game. And I think it's um, the, that one thing that Hearthstone is most sorely lacking in. And uh, I'm only making the video now because of recent card design. With the One Night in Karazhan expansion, I think that it's, it's hurting counterplay um, a lot and I want to give some examples of like a better direction to move in. So what is counterplay? Uh, that's like the biggest thing. Um, basically it's, it's, it's present in just about every successful multiplayer game that people would generally consider like good as like with in good well, like that it has good mechanics it's popular it's, it's doing well so uh, like in League of Legends or Dota or pretty much any MOBA game here is a storm uh, a very basic example is a skill shot right it's a very popular uh, type of ability in all of those games because um, well of a lot of reasons but m also because it introduces counterplay uh, in a very basic level so when somebody fires a skill shot from character A Character B has that projectile um, shooting towards him, and he can, you know, try to move in a zigzag, sidestep it. He can try to have unpredictable movement so that if it's a very fast skill shot, it's harder for player A to shoot it. Um, and, and that, I think, is one of the just very small things that um, helps make those games so successful because you have that element of counterplay not just with skill shots but across multiple different kinds of abilities uh, whether that's like an AOE ability in those games where you try to stay outside of the box or um, just uh, just so many different examples like it, it, invisibility right the fact that some characters can go invisible in MOBA games like Evelyn and the fact that I have the option to buy a pink ward uh, as a means of counterplay against that that's like a big thing in those games that just it, it, it gives the players a lot more control over balancing the state of their own game and um, feeling like their decisions have impact and are being rewarded um, this is present even in shooters like um, you know counter-strike if they're rushing B every single round um, you can uh, in Molotov off the tunnels right and there you go um, it's just like simple things you can do to make your opponent's strategy less effective uh, so, with Hearthstone, uh, ironically, one of the things that makes it so successful as a game also makes it really hard to introduce counterplay, uh, and that is the fact that Hearthstone moved away from a priority-based card game system and towards a type of game where you can execute everything on your own turn, and then your opponent executes everything on their own turn, and then you do stuff on your own turn. You're not interacting mid-turn uh, most of the time, with the exception of Secrets. So... Um, that is something I think Harson did an excellent job at. Um, I, I think that compared to card games like Magic that have had a lot less success online, um, that's the big thing, like holding those games back. The fact that it is a priority-based system, every time any ability triggers or any card is played, the other player has to say, okay, this resolves, I don't want to respond to this. And it just requires you to push okay like 200 times in one turn. Um, it just it increases the complexity level to just places it doesn't need to be, uh, especially when you're trying to introduce a lot of new players to your game. So um, with Hearthstone, uh, from a pure card design aspect, it's going to make it difficult to introduce counterplay in the first place, uh, but they have done it uh, on accident and on purpose in a couple of situations. So um, the two types of things in Hearthstone that do have a lot of counterplay behind them um, right now are AoE and Secrets, and those are the ones that Blizzard implemented on purpose. Right? So um, with AoE, if you know your opponent has Flame Strike in their deck, you're not just going to play out all the stuff in your hand necessarily all the time uh, like you would against a different class, um, because you know there's some danger of them Flame Striking your whole board. So uh, you'll make the play that's not quite optimal on board and maybe just hero power and leave a couple mana left over for your turn 
and um, you'll do this several turns in a row until your opponent eventually wants to pull the trigger on their flame strike. And in doing so, you're making their card less effective because of how you're playing your cards or not playing your cards. And that is so, so important to having games of anything feel satisfying and um, just well, like your decisions mattered. So uh, Secret's another example of this, right? You're going to attack in um, orders that aren't necessarily intuitive to try to narrow down the range of what secret your opponent has. You're going to think about what secrets are popular in the metagame. You're just going to not mindlessly play your stuff on curve and attack. You're going to think about the cards your opponent played and what you can do to make them less effective. So, fucking everything. Um, that is something, uh, there's like two examples of where we do have counterplay right now. Um, there's some niche examples as well, uh, such as Divine Favor. Uh, I feel like um, a lot of people wanted Divine Favor nerfed when Blizzard was talking about the wild and standard format introduction, but uh, I kind of wanted it to remain in the game because it's one of the few examples of counterplay that I, I talked about this on stream. It's one of the few examples of counterplay that isn't AoE or secrets because when you're playing against a deck that you know has Divine Favor in it, you're going to play your game in a different way as the control deck. You're going to be more aggressive about when you use your coin. You're going to play your cards for less value. You'll play Humility on a Totem Golem or something, even though it's only reducing attack by two. Uh, that's, that's like a... I need to get more sleep. Totem Golem is not in Paladin decks yet. Uh, but you know what I mean. Like you basically play your cards for less immediate, or for like less long-term value, uh, hoping to empty your hand in the short term. And that's like one way that Divine Favor encourages the other guy to play in a different way, just if it's in your deck. So all those things I think promote like healthy gameplay. I think it makes Hearthstone, um, as Taj put it, more about how you play your cards rather than just playing your cards. Uh, that's very important. So um, the reason I'm making this video now, uh, after One Night in Karazhan's released, is because for the first time ever, there's now this um, concentration of cards that um, are kind of inhibiting what little counterplay we already have. Um, it's not just secrets and AoE that include counterplay, but just little basic sequencing things turn to turn like if I'm playing against a druid and uh, he has four mana and I have four mana it's turn four I'm going to try to play my minions in a way that I can efficiently trade into like a druid of the claw the next turn uh, if my opponent plays that because I know that druid of the claw is going to be a card in his deck I know it's very likely that he plays that on turn five I'm, gonna, I'm going to account for it in the way that I sequence my minions that I'm playing that's a very like sm like small example of counterplay, but there is counterplay involved there, right? You're taking your opponent's stuff, their game plan into account, and you're changing your game plan as a result. So with uh, newest expansion, One Night in Karazhan, um, there are cards like Swashbuckler and Babbling Book and all of the portals being introduced that basically make that type of counterplay much harder to incorporate in a game. And when counterplay is something that your game is already lacking just because it's so hard to introduce via the mechanics of the game um, and the, the user interface, it's dangerous to keep printing cards that limit what little counterplay we have already. So that, that's basically like what I, what I want to talk about. So how do cards like Swashbuckler and Portal limit counterplay? Well, the range of cards that they're pulling is so big that you can't account for any possible outcome that they got from it. So if your opponent plays a Swashbuckler on turn one and they don't play that card from it for 10 turns, maybe it's just a dead card like Bolster that they never had a chance to play, but maybe you get blown out by Brawl at some point. Uh, and it, it's there isn't really a way to account for every outcome and there isn't a way to adapt your game plan to play differently because Swashbuckler got played against you. So the optimal line of play becomes let me just focus on my own linear game plan and just play my stuff out the way I would as if I didn't have an opponent. And that's like a, not how any multiplayer game should be played, right? You should not, like the, the less you're accounting for your opponent, the, it becomes more of like solitaire and it's just not a fun way to play a multiplayer game. So with, um, with Swashbuckler specifically, I'm gonna use him as an example and this applies to all the portals, this applies to Babbling Book. Um, I, I, 
I want to kind of use them as an example of a way we can move in the right direction. So um, I think one of my editors can link right here the video I made about good and bad RNG in Hearthstone. And in that video, I, um, I basically used Undercity Huckster as an example of good RNG compared to Flame Juggler as an example of bad RNG. And while I still stand by that, I think Huckster is moving in the right direction. And I think cards like Flame Juggler should stop being printed. The whole early game board control RNG is like, like way too volatile. Um, cards like Huckster weren't necessarily the best example either um, because the, the range of things that you get from that is so big that it discourages counterplay. Um, whereas there's a way to have Huckster do its whole randomness thing and making every game feel different, but still um, be in a smaller range that the opponent can account for what you got off of it and just promote counterplay basically. So um, I'm going to use Swashbuckler as an example. I'm going to compare Swashbuckler, boom, we'll pop up an image here, hopefully, and uh, Clockwork Gnome here. Uh, these two cards, uh, I think, kind of show what we should be moving away from and what we should be moving towards. So Swashbuckler, um, because the range is so big, you can't account for what you get off of it um, as the person playing against Swashbuckler, doesn't really encourage counterplay at all. If It encourages you to focus on your own game plan, like I mentioned, and uh, I think that this is something we want to move away from, even though I do love that this is not uh, a card like Fiery Bat. I think the fact that Swashbuckler is RNG that is on turn one but not randomly affecting the board, like props to Blizzard for, for doing that instead of Fiery Bat, you know. Um, anyway, Clockwork Gnome, I think, is an example of, like, the right direction. So it's still, like, putting random cards in your hand, but it's not truly random because the, the the range is a lot smaller you know it's not the same randomness as swashbuckler it's not 35 different outcomes that you have to account for that that's impossible to account for it's actually only seven so if your opponent who plays clockwork gnome let's say i'm playing freeze mage and my opponent is playing clockwork gnome and clockwork gnome dies early in the game and he hasn't played his spare part for like six or seven turns even though he's had one extra mana so I can already start narrowing the range. I can I can already think, okay, it's not armor plating, it's not whirling blades, it, you know, and I can start to think, wow, you know, since he hasn't played that uh, spare part for so long, it's actually very likely that it's reversing switch. And um, if I know it's reversing switch, maybe I'll be more conservative with my Doomsayer. Maybe I won't rely on it and get blown out by that card. Maybe I'll wait till I have double Doomsayer and I can play two of those in Frost Nova. Um, it, it's, like that whole thought process is an excellent example of counterplay, and it's very rewarding to be able to like put your opponent on a card, even though it was randomly generated, um, and change your game plan accordingly. So, um, I guess in, in general, I, I like that Blizzard is printing more cards like Swashbuckler that is randomness without randomly affecting the board early. Um, I think that's great, but I also think the range should be a lot smaller. Um, because of uh, if every deck has two or three swashbucklers, you're just removing even more counterplay from the game because it becomes harder to account for uh, your opponent's game plan and what they're trying to do. Uh, so uh, I think there's other problems of swashbuckler, uh, such as class identity and all of those issues that uh, aren't, that's for another video another time. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to see more stuff move in the direction of Clockwork Gnome and Toshley and all that. So. Uh, or uh, Zeril, for example, another great example. So um, I know those are just like spare party cards, but uh, that's what comes to mind right now. So anyway, um, I hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, I think the portals are kind of, you know, j just as problematic because the range of five drops that you get is just so big off of like a, or sorry, like four drops off of Ironforge portal or six drops off of Moonglade portal. You can't account for any of them. You have to just Assume your opponent's playing like a Boulder Fist Ogre or like a 6-6 six, six, and you just play out your own crap. And I, I, just, I don't think that's good for the game, right? I think we should be taking into account our opponent's strategy and playing differently every game as a result. Um, so one of the reasons I, I, I... One of the things I think counterplay could solve in a lot of ways is this whole worry in Hearthstone that every game will play out the same. Like, Blizzard is using RNG as like the solution for... Uh, games feeling too similar back to back, um, and that's fine. That's like, RNG should be used in that way to some extent. But if you introduce more elements of counterplay, the player base will kind of do that for you. If I'm playing against multiple different classes and all of them have a different game plan, 
that isn't just curving out with whatever their most efficient dudes is, this patch, um, then I'm going to play my same deck in a very different game, in a very different way against different matchups. I think it's very healthy, you know, like if I'm dumping my hand as fast as I can against Aggro Paladin, then against like a, in a control deck, I'm trying to like make sure I don't use my big game hunter until I can use it to kill this one threat I can't deal with otherwise. And just like, you know, accounting for their deck and what they're doing. I think it just promotes more diversity in gameplay. Uh, and that's it's very good. It's very like rewarding diversity too. So anyway, um, this is where if I was a uh, actual good content creator, I would have examples of custom cards for you uh, for, uh, I guess, the right direction, cards that promote counterplay. Uh, but uh, I have a stream to get to, and I wanted to do this real quick in one take as usual. Uh, so I'll leave that to you guys. If you can leave um, here in the YouTube comments or uh, on Reddit, if this ends up getting a post or something, uh, just some examples of like, custom cards that promote counterplay. I would love to see some of your thoughts on that because in my head, I, I know that if I was the Blizzard developer, I would be having trouble un under the mechanics of Hearthstone to develop cards that promote that uh, in, in ways other than AoE and, and secrets. Uh, so uh, I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, keep in mind, don't make them too complex. It's important that Hearthstone is still a simple game. So try to keep the abilities not too long-winded, like seven words and... Uh, yeah. Uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Drop a sub. I'll be back with a uh, new video on Arena pretty soon. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hey guys, what's up? It's Rainhead back, and this time I'm making a video about the randomness in Hearthstone. Honestly, this is a video that's been a long time coming. 